Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lecture, we are going to tackle how to determine equilibrium concentrations using what we would call the ice chart or the ice table method. You may have heard this in class, but this is a very common way of going about and solving equilibrium concentrations. Now, there's different approaches that you have to take based on the information and the type of reaction that's given. So in today's lecture, I am going to cover the square root method, and the square root method is going to be specific to when we can take the square root of both sides and not end up with some sort of a problematic term. So if that doesn't work, you will need to use the quadratic equation, and that's going to be a separate lecture within itself. All right, so let's take a look at what we're dealing with here today. Okay, so for determining equilibrium concentrations, this may be the first time you've been hearing about or have been exposed to ICE calculations. So ICE is an acronym that is going to be used to represent the following. So the I is initial concentrations. So these are the concentrations that you would initially be starting with. We're looking at our reactants in this case. Then you're going to have change in concentration. So as the reaction proceeds forward, you are going to be headed towards equilibrium, and there's going to be some amount of change that occurs in that pathway. And then finally, we have equilibrium concentration. So that is usually the end goal of most of these problems. You want to calculate the concentrations that will be present at equilibrium if you know the initial concentrations starting out. And in order to do this, you will need the KEQ value, sometimes referred to as the KC, okay, which is the equilibrium constant. So you do need to know that bit of information in order to tackle these problems. And they're usually given whenever problems are uh, presented in a class setting. So when we take a look at this, here's an example problem, and we're going to walk through this today. So you've got nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, and that is in equilibrium with the nitrogen monoxide. Now I've already balanced this equation, but if you do not have balanced equations when you are starting this, that is the first thing you do. Before you even set up an ice chart or an ice table, you must balance your equation. And that is going to be important because the coefficients that are present are going to factor into the math. So if something has a two in front of it, we're gonna be squaring the concentrations when we get into the equilibrium expression. And not only that, but when we set up the ice table and we deal with changes in amounts we have to keep these in mind as well and you'll see that in today's example okay so the problem that we have here reads as follows a reaction mixture initially contains n2 and o2 at a concentration of 0 0.200 molarity and the question says find the concentration of n2 O2 and NO at equilibrium if KEQ is equal to 0 0.10. So the first thing you have to do when you get problems like this is you need to set up an ice chart. So it's usually a good idea to rewrite the problem, or not the whole problem, but the uh, expression itself, the actual chemical reaction. So if I were to rewrite the equation, what I have is N2 plus O2, and that is in equilibrium with the NO. Okay, now there's two of those there to balance the equation. So over to the side, I'm going to set up my ice table or my ice chart, and I'll label it as ICE. Okay, now I have the information on the initial amounts, and so the initial amounts of the nitrogen and the oxygen gas are 0 0.200 molarity. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill that section in. I'll put 0 0.20 and then I'll also put 0 0.20. Now at the beginning of a reaction, I do not have any of the NO. And so I would put a zero there to signify that when this reaction has just initially started, there is no concentration or no molarity for the NO. Now, this is going to change as it heads towards equilibrium. We don't know by how much yet. That's what we're going to try to solve. And so what we do is we use a placeholder and we can say, I don't know how much nitrogen is going to be lost, but I'll say it's some amount X. And so I'll say minus X. And then over here, 
I see the O2 and I say I don't know how much O2 is going to be lost, but it's going to be some amount that we'll call X. And then when I come over here, I'm going to gain some amount of the nitrogen monoxide because I don't have any of it formed yet. So when I do that, I go, I go ahead and I write it in terms of X, but I look at the coefficient here. Now both of these had a coefficient of 1 or an implied 1, so I don't need anything other than the X. But this one has a 2. And so I'm going to add plus 2x over here. Now if this were to be a 3 or a 4, it would be plus 3x plus 4x and so on. If any of these were 2s or 3s, it would be minus 2x minus 3x and so on. Okay, so then at equilibrium, I can express these terms with x involved. And I can say, well, I know I started with 0.20 zero molarity and I lost some amount X so at equilibrium I would expect that the concentration will be 0 0.200 minus X and it would be the same thing for the oxygen so it's going to be 0 0.200 minus X and then this if I look at this would be 0 plus 2x so it would just be 2x right so now I have all of my equilibrium concentrations expressed in terms of X I now need to go in and solve for X itself because once I have X I can plug it back into this equilibrium line the E in the ice chart and I can find the actual molarities and concentration. Okay so to do this it's now time to set up the equilibrium expression. Okay and we're going to need to keep in mind that KEQ has been given here we have a KEQ of 0.1 so that will be important because we're going to set the equilibrium expression 2 KEQ because KEQ equals the equilibrium expression or the equilibrium constant. Okay, so we'll start. Remember that it's products over reactants when we are dealing with equilibrium. And so what I can do is I can say, okay, the KEQ is 0 0.10. That is going to equal the equilibrium expression. So I'll start with my products. I only have one product, which is the NO, and the NO has a value of 2x when I am at equilibrium. So I put 2x there. Now you can't forget as you're getting caught up in these ice problems that when we express an equilibrium uh, quotient or the KEQ, the constant, you have to square or cube or you know raise things to the fourth power depending on their coefficient. So whatever the coefficient is, you have to raise it to that power. So because the NO has a 2 in the balanced equation, I have to raise the 2x and square it in order for this to come out properly. Now, what about the reactants, which I would put at the bottom here? So the reactants are going to be 0 0.200 minus x and I have it again so if you keep in mind that the would it would normally be uh, you know the N2 concentration times the O2 concentration I'm really taking this expression times itself and so what I have at the end there is I have a squared expression so I can write this by saying I have 0 0.2 minus x and that expression would be squared because both of these okay are present in that denominator and so now what I have is I have a side that has squares on both the top and the bottom and when you see something like this you can use what's called the square root method so the square root method is going to take the square root of everything on this side and it will take the square root of everything on the other side as well because what algebraically if I do something to one side of the equation I have to do it to the other side of the equation so that's going to free up the squared terms and just put everything back in terms of X and then I will get a separate value for the square root of 0.1 so to move forward with that let's just simplify this a little bit by getting rid of the squares what we can state is that we have the square root of 0.10 and that is equal to 2x over 0 0.2, and I'm keeping those zeros there just for the purpose of significant figures, okay, minus x.
So the next thing is we want to isolate x by itself. That's how we're going to solve for x, but I have it in the numerator and the denominator. So it's almost always a good idea or easiest to get rid of it in the denominator. And so what I can do, algebraically speaking, is I can multiply each side by 0.2 minus x, because if I do this, then this will cancel, and then I can do that by bringing this over here, and all I have is the same expression, but now I'm going to need to distribute, right, because it's multiplied by that square root of 0.1. So at least I have the 2x by itself on that side now, and I can consolidate terms after I distribute here. So what I will do next is I will multiply the square root of 0.1 times 0.2, and then I will also multiply the square root of 0.1 times negative x. And what I would get in return here is the 0.2 times the square root of 0.1. And if you run that through your calculator, you should get a value of 0 0.063. Okay, and then when I multiply it by negative x, it's simply going to be minus the square root of 0.1x right? So that is equal to 2x, because I haven't done anything with the 2x over here. So now the next thing is, let's get x on the same side. So in order to get x on the same side, since this is a negative, I'm going to add the square root of 0.10x, and that'll cancel on this side, okay? But then I'll bring it over to the other side. I have to add it to the other side. And so what I will get is an expression that says 0 0.063 equals 2x plus the square root of 0.1x. So now I'm getting to a position where I can actually combine terms because this is an x term and this is an x term. So I can combine these terms and then I can certainly solve for x after that. So let's go ahead and do that. And so if you take 2 times the square root of 0.1, you should get 2.3 back. So test that in your calculator. And what you would have is 0 0.063 equals 2.3x. So we're in the home stretch here. We're about ready to finish up. Okay, what we can do now is solve for x by itself. I can divide through by 2.3 on each side, that'll cancel. So I'm gonna take 0 0.063 and divide by 2.3, and that will tell me what x is. So if you run that through your calculator, you should find that x is going to equal 0 0.027, okay? Now this is the x term. A lot of students get excited when they get here, and that's for good reason, because of all the calculation that was involved. However, you're not done. X has a value now. We have to go back up and we have to look at the equilibrium expression and we have to plug x into each of these in order to actually solve for the concentrations. So we can do the nitrogen and the oxygen in one calculation because they have the same exact expression in terms of x. So let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, we can say that N2, oops, and O2 at equilibrium are going to equal 0 0.200 minus the x term, so 0 0.027. Okay, and so if you put that into the calculator or you run that by hand, you're going to get 0.173. So 0 0.173 is the concentration, is the molarity of these at equilibrium. That makes sense because they started at 0.2, they should be at a value lower than 0.2 when equilibrium is achieved or obtained. Okay, and then the last one is pretty simple. It's the concentration of NO. And for the concentration of NO, what did we have? It was 2X. Okay, so we're gonna take two times the 0.027 Okay, and then that would give us a value of 0.054, so 0.054.
for molarity. Okay. And those are the concentrations of the various chemical species at equilibrium. All right, so I hope you found this useful and helpful in setting up ice charts and understanding how to initially solve for equilibrium concentrations. But not just that, that you've also got a handle on the square root method now. Again, the key for the square root method lies right up here. If you have a squared term in the numerator and a squared term in the denominator, you can square root the whole thing to simplify it as long as you square root what's on the other side. Okay. Again, this will not work every time, so if you find problems that this does not work in, you want to head to the quadratic equation, and we will have a separate lecture on that uh, shortly. Okay. So thank you for the support. As always, I appreciate you learning with ChemComplete. I know there's a lot of options out there. You can head to ChemComplete.com to see all the free resources as well as some of the very affordable guides on topics that you may find difficult. And other than that, remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'll get back to people as soon as possible. Thank you for learning with me today, and I will see everybody in the next lecture.